Good morning. You're perky today. Sleep well? Yeah, I did. I've been thinking. Too much has happened for this to be mere coincidence. What do you mean? In the gallery, there was a painting. A painting of her. Really? I knew it looked familiar, but I didn't recognize it until now. What did it look like? Why don't we head over and you can take a look for yourself. You coming? Yeah. Hi again. Hi. You got home okay? I think Nish had to half carry you out of here. Was I that bad? Well, originally I thought I had bought too much wine. It turns out I didn't have to worry, so thanks. <laughs> uh, sure. No problem. Anyway, I have to go over some stuff. Feel free to look around. There. It's her. I knew it. Now look at that and tell me this isn't a coincidence. Stupid old hag. We'll find you. Just see if we don't. It's just a lighthouse. I wonder which one. Definitely looks like the woman from the other night, but she looks sad. Hi, Josie? Yes? Hi, Josie. Can I talk to you for a bit more? I'm kind of swamped, but okay. I'd like to know more about that painting there. Oh, the Dark Lady. It's different than his other paintings. I'm worried the investors won't like it, but Claude insists. What do you want to know? What can you tell me about the Dark Lady? Well, it's different, isn't it? Claude's work is mostly abstract, but this is actually of a specific subject. Did Claude ever say why? No, but she's definitely striking. She strikes all right. I still got the scars. Claude gets weird when I ask who she is or why he put her in front of the Roosevelt Island Lighthouse. I figure it's just one of those eccentric artist things. The Roosevelt Island Lighthouse, huh? It's been a while since I've been over there. Where can I find Claude? Knowing him, he's probably preparing for tonight. Preparing? You know, glug glug. He's hitting the sauce. Ah. You mentioned something about investors. Oh yes, the Meltzer Foundation. They paid for everything, the renovation, the lights, everything. I've got to pay them back eventually, of course, but still. Thanks, Josie. Sure, Angela. You ready to go? All right. Yes. Hi. Is this the Meltzer Foundation? Yes. Oh, good. I was hoping to ask you a few questions. Uh, Paul, this one's for you. Hmm? Oh, sure thing. Come on over and step into my office. So, I'm Paul Meltzer, and my silent partner over there is my brother, Charlie. Rosangela Blackwell. A pleasure. So, what can we do for you? I was hoping to talk to you about what you do here. Really? Well, well, well. We're moving up in the world, Charlie. Uh-huh. So, Rosangela, 
You with a newspaper? I'm sort of freelance. Struggling, eh? Well, that's what the Melter Foundation is all about. Isn't that right, Charlie? Uh-huh. Well, ask away. I was wondering what you do here. You know, I wonder that myself. Hey, Charlie, what do we do here? We give away money. That's right. We're into private investments. We grant risk-free capital to struggling businesses. You really just give away money? Ha! <laughs> no, not exactly. It's about giving money away wisely. You heard the man. If you want the lowdown on what we do, just ask. Josie Park told me that you invested in her gallery. You know Josie. How's she doing? She's fine, I guess. We're both rooting for her, right, Charlie? Sure. Tell me more about. Let's say you have a brilliant idea for a business, but you've made some mistakes in the past. You've got bad credit or were in debt for a long time. No reputable bank in the country would give you a loan, or if they did, they'd charge you a fortune in interest. But not us. We believe in a second chance. We'll loan you the money to kickstart your business in return for a share of the profits. If your business takes off, wonderful. We both win. If not, we're the one who pays for it. Your foundation is pretty generous. Well, we don't give money to just anybody. Charlie over there is in charge of separating the wheat from the chaff. When someone comes to us with their handout, Charlie does his research and makes sure that they are worth the risk. You wouldn't believe some of the bums we get in here. Anything else you can tell me about the foundation? I've given you the basic idea. There's nothing else really to tell you. Well, thanks for talking to me. I might be back later. Sure thing. Here, take my card. If you have any questions, just email. Oh, so you're on Bmail too? <laughs> Is it everybody? God, did you see that chick walk? She waddles like a duck. Huh? Our reporter friend. She's kind of your type. What do you mean? Yeesh, Charlie, come up for air. She walked right past your desk. I didn't see any duck. Never mind. Stay put, kid. I'm gonna snoop around. He's reading a book called Best Accountant Practices, Fourth Edition. Sounds thrilling. Hey, when are we going to get a real company email address? What's wrong with the one we've got? Oh, come on, B mail. Who is going to take us seriously when we only got a B-mail account? It does the job. <sighs> At least we have a real internet connection. Although I don't trust this wireless crap. These things are way beyond me. Hey Charlie, is this wireless internet thing safe? Of course it's safe. I just read online that they can give you cancer. It won't give you cancer, Paul. Then maybe you should sit next to it. Give it a rest, Paul. These things. I can't stand this B-mail account. What's the problem now? I'm getting all sorts of spam. I got three from this Tomo person. Who the heck is Tomo? Just delete them, Paul. He seems pretty hard at work. What the heck is that thing? Probably one of those computer things Red's always playing with. Doesn't it bother you that anybody with Bmail software can log into our email? Only if they have your password, Paul. Just don't tell anybody, and you'll be fine. I've got no idea what this thing is. Hey, my internet just went down. Stupid wireless. It should come up again in a minute. Either Paul likes to play, or he wants people to think he does. Finally, the internet's back up. Hey Charlie, what's that Bmail password again? Don't you remember anything? It's tennis fifty three. Just write it down. No way. Someone might find it. Hey, when are we going to get a real company email address? Oh come on, Bmail. Who is going to take us seriously when we only got a 
B mail account. It does the job. <sighs> At least we have a real. Looks like he's been drinking for a while. Claude? Rosangela Blackwell, the writer. Come on over. Have a drink. You remember me. Who could forget someone who could down three glasses of claret in half an hour? <laughs> Bit early to be drinking. Says the woman who had to be carried home the other night by an old Indian lady. My opening is tonight, and I intend to be well and truly plastered. It's the only way I'll be able to bear it. I'd like to talk to you about your work. I'd love to, but I'm not drunk enough. I really like that painting of yours, the dark lady. <laughs> My paintings aren't meant to be liked. They are meant to be understood. But nobody does. I feel like Joe Gould sometimes. I'd really like to know more about the Dark Lady. I have a rule. I don't talk about my work unless I'm drunk enough. How drunk is that? I'm not sure, but I'm working on it. You know about Joe Gould? Sure I do. He was one of the city's last geniuses. Or maybe he was just nuts, I don't know. Maybe I'm just nuts too. Either way, he's famous now. Thanks to Joseph Mitchell. Did he just say Joseph Mitchell? Could you tell me more about Joseph Mitchell? Another of the city's great geniuses. Gone. He could talk to you for five minutes and then write a biography that made you seem like the most fascinating person alive. They wouldn't be alive for long. But then he stopped writing. Nobody knows why, at least not for sure. He published a book about Joe Gould, and then poof, no more writing. He went to his office at the New Yorker every day for 30 years, but never wrote a single word. Bye, Claude. Yeah. Oh, man, look at the time. I guess I gotta go face the art public. See you at the gallery later, or not.
He's really studying that glass of wine. He must be an artist. Claude? Hey, you came. You're drunk. Very much so. We need to talk about the Countess. Who? The Dark Lady. I don't talk about her. So you do know her. Don't try to understand my work. I haven't met a single person who really understands art. Not one. Who says I don't understand art? Hmm. You understand my work? All right. Tell me what you think of this painting behind me. The hard lines in this painting are really provocative. You think so, huh? Oh, yes. The hard lines against a soft world. Really? Excuse me. So, Claude... What do you think of this painting here? Does this painting represent darkness and shadow? It could. Is that what it feels like to you? Sure. Then it does. Excuse me. Claude, we really need to talk about... What do you think of this painting here? Why is one side so colorful and the other so dark? Well, look at it. The darkness is eating away the color, overwhelming it. That's a bit bleak. It's a bleak world. Can I be forward? Forward? It's been a great pleasure talking to you. Really? Yes. Very refreshing. You seem to have a greater understanding of art than most of the rabble here. I do? Listen, Rosangela, was it? Oh, call me Rosa. Rosa. I'm suffocating in here. I need a breath of fresh air. Come meet me out on the fire escape. We can talk more in private. Hey, way to go! Claude, where are you going? Just some fresh air, Joes. I'll be back. No worries. We need to talk about the Countess. Yes. She's so sad and angry. I wonder why. How do you know her? I see her in my dreams. She's looking for me. She hasn't found me yet, but I'm hoping my painting will help. You want her to find you? Yes. She's trapped and looking to escape. She needs me to help her. She's chosen me. Oh, I get it. He's the chosen one. Why don't we ever meet anyone sane? Why did she choose you? Because of my work. She's dead, I think. But she will live through my work. Artists. Nuts. All of them. Why is she sad? She's looking for something she lost. Yeah, her mind. It consumes her every thought. Why is she so angry? I don't know. I wish I did. I think she's being forced against her will, being turned into something she shouldn't be. Like what? I don't know. Claude, the Countess is dangerous. Dangerous? No. She's lost and angry, but not dangerous. I've met her. She's killed many times. You? Why would she seek you? You're not an artist. No, but I've still seen her. She's powerful. Power you don't want to mess with. I just want to help her. Hey, pal, helping ghosts is our turf. Just be careful, okay? Careful? Just who are you? How do you know so much about my dreams? I'm... well, I know things. Know things? Like what? That you're messing with stuff you don't understand. And you do? Well, I I'm working on it. <sighs> All right. Teach me. I need to know. Don't look at me, kid. Look. There's... something about me. I shouldn't tell you, but you're in danger. What is it? Look out! No! No! No, you didn't! Claude! Suicide. Well, what else would they think? He was drunk and erratic and known to be temperamental. Just be thankful they didn't accuse you of killing him. Yeah, 
Lucky. She killed him, Joey, right in front of me. Us, kid. Us. I was there, too. He was opening up to me. I could have warned him. I, I could have helped him. It happened too fast. There wasn't anything either of us could do. It's not right. Newsflash, kid. The world's a rotten place. It doesn't have to be. We have to stop her, Joey. She can't kill anybody else. Look, darling, your aunt met that witch and barely survived. And no offense, doll, she had a stiffer spine than you. Maybe. But she didn't finish the job, did she? Not exactly, no. Then I have to finish what she started. Good night, Joey. I'm proud of you, Rosangela. You are proving to be much stronger than your guide suspects. He thinks I'm stupid. Be wary of him. Follow your heart. Who are you? Shh. Sleep. Tomorrow you have a challenge to meet, and you must be fresh. You won't remember me, but we will meet soon. Good morning. Mm, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Hold your horses, will you? I'm